And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going to be going around with all sorts of different craftsmen. We're going to be building buildings for the, for the Queen. We are going to be doing repairs, all sorts of good work. We got blacksmiths, we have bricklayers, and so on and so forth. We're looking at the Queen's Architect. This is from Queen Games. Uh, it's from two to four players. It's about 60 minutes long, and it's like a medium weight Euro game. Let's take a look. Here's the board for two or three players. It's a double-sided board. It flips over for four players or there'll be more things to fight over. In this case, we're using a three-player game. Over the course of the game, you're going to be building or repairing buildings around the village. And you're going to be working your way up this prestige track or appreciation track and go all the way to the top. One of the cool features of this game is all the different points that you'll need to get to the next level and all the different demands at the building, meaning the different style workers that you'll need, is all random. So every game plays quite differently. Each person has a tableau like this. We have our own rondelle for the color red, and we have a tavern. Now at the beginning of the game, through a drafting process, uh, you'll have a certain amount of people. In this case, we have two, and we have different workers. So this is from the masons, and this is from the bricklayers. And you may have different guilds when you start. Now notice that when these are put on here, they all have different powers spinning around. We'll talk about those later. On your turn, what you're going to do is you're going to move on your own personal rondelle between one and three spaces. So he starts off here, and I could go one, two, or three. I go to one of those three spots. So let's talk about some of these actions. This action here is a day laborer. You see the bucket of gold there. It allows you to get one gold or taller for each two, for every two workers you have. Right now we have two, so I could get one. Uh, basically one taller there. Now some workers actually have the day laborer icon right on it like this and if so in addition to getting the, the one coin for every two players you can spin them one turn to get two more coins and you can do that for anybody that has the bag of gold. Spinning that is gonna sometimes be better because now he's a little bit more powerful but once they spin and get all the way to the end they'll come out. I'll do I'll talk more about how the workers work and how they start and things like that when we get to the higher. So that's basically getting day laborers. You send them out for day laboring and they get uh, money that way. Uh, the next one I want to show you, on the next turn we can go to the money changer. And that brings you to this board here. We all start on a 1x here. Now what you can do is everyone starts with two bonds. And each of these bonds are worth two gold. Now if I'm here, I can either trade in a bond, and this tells me how many I can trade in. Right now I can just trade in one. I can trade in this bond and raise some money and get two dollars. Now instead of doing that while I'm at that spot, I could just move up and that would be my turn. Now next time I went there, I could sell up to two bonds if I wanted to for four gold because they're worth two apiece. Now again, later on, if I for a turn I, and I'm on that spot, I can go here. So one, two, three, or four of these you could sell at once. You're either selling or moving up this track when you're at the money changer. You can also uh, move, and this is a carriage. Now everyone starts in the middle of the board. There's these little carriage little tokens here. And you can move around to go to places that you're going to be building in. Now, if I move just one spot, it's free, but I can move as many spots as I can afford. And up here, it shows me, depending on how many spots I go, that's how much it's going to cost me to get there. Now, let's get to hiring. That's this one. Remember, you're on your turn, you're always going one, two, or three. Let's get to hiring here. Now, this is random setup, too. There's uh, six different guilds that we have here. We have, you know, the glass blowers and things like that. And they're randomly placed here. Now, there are certain starting tiles that we draft at the beginning. And then the rest of those ones that aren't drafted are actually added to the top of the stack. So the game actually has a, you know, somewhat predictable even uh, of the first, I'd say 18 tiles are going to be somewhat even there. But when we get there, uh, we can do different things. Now, as you can see, we can hire this one for one or this one for two, and the money goes all the way up depending on uh, how much you want to spend. Three, four, five, and the top one starts at six. Now, it's really interesting how this works. Cheaper is at the bottom. Now, if you buy this person, you must place whatever, I, whatever it is, wherever is touching the hammer, onto your player board. So it's touching here on this one, here on this one, 
and here on this one. And what that really means is if I bought that cheapest one for one, this is where I'm placing it. And it's a power of five, which is cool. We'll talk about building here in a minute what this means. But after somebody gets used up or they're, they're used for a build, everything's gonna spin clockwise. And since this is the last spot, this person's only good for one build. Uh, more on that later by default. So if this person did a build, when they're done, they're gonna go away. Now, if this person was in second position, he would have been two and he would have started here. Then he's gonna get one, two builds before he goes away. The price of three, it would have started here. The price of four would have started here, five and six. So the more expensive the person, the more uses you're gonna get out of them until they're completely fatigued and that you must get rid of them. Very interesting mechanic and it's the core mechanic of the game. Now let's assume I bought that person for one. We would put a new tile from the top of the stack there, and we'd also move this one down. So this one went from six to five. If someone buys a different tile other than this, it goes to four. And if someone buys a different tile other than that, this one actually gets swiped and everybody moves up and everything gets replaced. And that's sort of how the buying market works. Now let's say on my turn, uh, I, was at this, I went to this icon, which is basically the construct icon. And when you construct, you have one or two, one of two options. Now notice in the, in the whole world here, there's three different size places. This is a village and we only need two craftsmen to build there. This one is a monastery and we only need three craftsmen to build there. And we also have a town which is needs four craftsmen of specific types. Let's zoom in a bit. Now this shows me I need at least one bricklayer, one tailor, and one mason. Now let's take a look. Now we look here and I have a tailor, a bricklayer, and a mason. Now I could have more. It doesn't matter. If I had uh, one of these guys here, he's not needed. But if I were to build right now, we would add up the points of everybody that's pointing here. So this would actually be five and three is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. This would be 13 points of building. Uh, and they would all work for me. Uh, and everybody you have hired would work. But in this case, I just have these ones. So I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 10 points of building. Now you're gonna, I'm gonna get 10 points, but everyone is gonna spin towards clockwise like the arrows. So now this guy's gonna go from three and he stays at three. This guy goes from two, he gets a little weaker. But then later on, he gets stronger again. This lady, it's the one I bought for $1. And remember, because I bought her so cheap, she's only get, gonna get one use out of her. So she gives me that five, but then she's going away because she's completely done at that point. So I got 10. Now it shows you for a small village, the most you can get is 10. For a monastery, 15. For a town, 20. I was doing one of the ones that you needed three, and I'm under the max, so that's okay. Even if I had more than 15, that's fine, but that's how many points I would get. So in this case, I would move up 10 points on the scale. Now this allows me to go up to the eight, and I have two left over. So because I have two left over, I get one of these bonds as remainders. So I had 10 points, there's eight, I have two remainders, one, two. And remember when I showed you how to trade these in for money later. Now, if for some reason I got 13, instead of just moving up one, I could have jumped up both of them. Boom, just like that. Now, if I got the max of 15, I would have jumped over both of these and still gotten two for a remainder. And that's how you work up the way of this track. And also, when I made that build and I finished this one, I would have taken my cube and put it over here. It says minus zero. I'm the first one there. Now, the second person that goes to this location and builds is gonna get their, their points minus two. But then if that person gets there, then the third person is minus four, and that's pretty much it for that. I showed you building during the construction phase, but there's one other thing you can do. You can actually do repairs. To do repairs, uh, you can be in any place. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're at. And what you can do is I can spin any one of these guys. Uh, I can spin up to three guys and they all have to be from different guilds. So in this case, I could spin this one one, I could spin this one one, and I could spin this one one, and all of them are getting me however many prestige points or repair points that are on here. So I would've gotten two, four, six. So in this case, I actually could have jumped up one more full spot in there. And if you had any remainders, you could still get them just like as if you build. But it's a way to get some small points and jump up in small steps just by repairing. Now the last action I'm going to show you that I haven't shown you before, remember you can only go one to three spots, but let's just say I came to the tavern. And let's also say that I hadn't used this lady yet and she was on her last leg. Remember, once I used her, she was gone. Now the tavern's really cool. I can pick anybody that's not already in the tavern. I have one of these for each of the guild types. So maybe I want to send my mason and I want to send my tailor. So I would take those two icons. 
I would put them in the tavern. Now, for however many people I put there, that's how much it costs. This would cost me three because I'm putting two, uh, two uh, tiles in there. Now, for each one that went there and rested, instead of spinning them the way that you normally would when they work, you spin them back. They actually get rest. So this lady went from five. She went to a power of three, which is less, but now I get to use her one additional more time. So you can get them rest and keep them longer because they've rested in the tavern. And you would do it if I had multiple people from the same guild, for example. I had two tailors. They both would have gotten spun uh, because I, I had the tailors rest. Now the next time you go to the tavern, what you do is you move these guys from here up into the dormitory and then I can move anybody else that I want here. And then next time I go to uh, the tavern, I would put the guys from here would come back here. These guys would go here. And if I want to put them here again, I could. This stops you from always using the same guys every time. You got to wait at least two times going through the tavern before you're putting the same guild through there. Now that is going to continue the whole game like this until you get past this top spot. And then this says a minimum of 15 to work on the prince's uh, castle there. So then essentially you have to be in the middle in the castle and then do work that adds up to at least 15. And the first person to do that triggers the end of the game and everybody else to make sure everyone has the same even amount of turns at the end. If you're the only person to do it, you win. Uh, if it's tie, you look at everyone's points where they're at that round and that's the tiebreaker. But sort of a racing game. The first one to go ahead and do that is the winner. All right, well, there's Queen's Architect. Whoa, stop the press. This game's amazing. I love, love, love this game. Queen Games has been kind of quiet for me lately. They haven't come out with anything that I used. I really like Queen Games because they have a lot of those family game styles that I love. They tend to be my sweet spot, but they haven't come out with anything in a while that's really like just I fell in love with since I think like Escape the Curse of the Temple, which is still one of my favorites. But anyway, this game is amazing. I, I would call it, say, a medium weight Euro game. And I don't typically like Euro games, but gosh, and that Rondell me mechanism. What I love, okay, there's a lot of things I love about this game. First of all, Queen Games, awesome components. Even the insert of the box always looks beautiful. Everything in this game is gorgeous. The artwork, the components, solid production that you would expect from Queen Games. Now, the game itself, oh man. Okay, I love how double-sided board, two or three players on one side, four players on the other side. I really love in this game, it's like an engine building game with a racing, right? You're, you're racing to be the first one done and it has that engine building. The thing I really love about this game is it's, it's really mathy. Uh, so some people might not like this because it's too mathy. If you play Power Grid and you say, I don't like it because it's too mathy, you might not like this game. In fact, you probably won't love it and you might not even like it. If you play Power Grid and you're like, oh, I like trying to figure out and this is where it brought me flashbacks to. When you're power, playing Power Grid and you're sitting there and you're like, okay, this round, I have just enough money to buy that resource, that resource, that resource. Like five, five, and six, okay? And then I'm gonna move to this town, that's another 23. And I'm gonna move to that town, that's another 24. I need exactly this much money this round if everything goes right. And you have these like mathematical calculations going through your head and you plan it and you do it and it's like very mathy. I felt like this is the same thing. You're looking at all your workers. You're like, this guy's a six, a seven, a one, a zero. Uh, okay, I need to, I just need two more points to jump up a second level and that's huge. What can I do? Can I buy another guy and stick him in there? Can I massage this guy back and go to the tavern and move him back one? But if I move him back, he's gonna go down one. This guy has to come up one. And like, and, and then you're like, okay, so where am I? I, I've gotta go over here, it's two spaces away. It's gonna cost me two gold. But then I need, you know, and then it's like, there's all this mathematics that goes on in this game. So for me, it's like a Euro game, but it is a mathematical puzzle the whole game through where you're building this engine, the Rondell mechanism. I love it. You're always trying to figure out like money versus something else. And it's like, even if you go, I love how like, if you get a bunch of points and you don't quite get to that second level, at least you get a lot of those, those bonus bonds that you can then trade in. And then it's like, okay, do you trade them in one at a time or do you spend a whole turn to move up so that later in the game you can throw three of them out at a time and get six gold. Uh, and then it's like that that jockeying for guys. Like the last game we played, the glass blowers were like so thin. They did not come out and almost everything needed one. And everyone's like just waiting for that guy to come. So as soon as he comes, we pounce on him. And it's like, I love that mechanic, that, that side of the board there. Like I could buy this guy for one, but he's only gonna be good for one build. Or I can wait till he gets up higher and then grab another multiple builds. So it's like, do I wait and then pay more? 
or am I afraid somebody else is gonna take them? And so I may need to take them quick, but then I'm gonna have to send them to the tavern a bunch of times so I can use them more than once. I love it. The decisions in this game are awesome. Get optimizing your workers for the types that you have, for where you need to go, for the numbers. Oh, this game just hit for me all cylinders. For me, this is easily so far this year in my top 10 for this year. Love it. If you don't like mathy Euros, you may not like this game. If you do like mathy, you're gonna love it probably. And I think it's great. The only comment, the only play I have is with two. It does feel a little open. Um, whether it's just there's not that much competition for stuff, not as much. Um, but I, I've read there's a lot of variants out there of people, ways that people have come up with to combat that. Uh, and also the designer actually came out with his own un, unofficial ways to nine other ways variants that you can play the game to make it even deeper, right? So wow. It's almost like a mini expansion that this guy has built in unofficially that you could play with afterwards. I also love the random setup, random craftsman, random uh, scoring track, uh, random demand tiles. Every game is gonna be somewhat different. You're gonna have to adjust. Love this game. Fantastic Queen's Architect. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.